Welcome to the latest edition of All's Caps with former capital defenseman Carl Alston. I'm AP Hockey writer Steve Wynum, and we are pleased to be joined by VEASAN hockey analyst Andy McNeil. Andy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. A- Andy is from Edmonton. We're going to get to ga- some his thoughts on Capitals, gambling, injury reports, obviously Carl's stupid questions. But before we started recording, uh, Andy had a question for Carl. I was like, Let- let's just let's tape this because uh, Andy is, is based in, in Edmonton. Those of you who are, who are watching the video can see all the, the jerseys behind him. But he's got a Capitals hat on, all the other stuff, but has a, a, a question or a theory about Edmonton and hockey players. So I used to live downtown, as, as I was just mentioning to you guys, on, on Jasper Avenue in Edmonton, right next to uh, uh, the Fairmont Hotel, the McDonald Hotel, one of the more, the most prestigious hotel, I guess, in, in the city, uh, across the street from the West. And then, you know, pretty soon after uh, moving downtown, I, it was hockey season. And I got a glimpse of kind of, you know, what just what you guys, what NHL players have to deal with on a daily basis, uh, as far as people hounding you for autographs. And I was just wondering, uh, where does Edmonton rank uh, on that scale as far as, uh, you know, not being able to step outside your hotel room door uh, without getting hounded <laughs> for an autograph? <laughs> yeah, Edmonton, Edmonton's in the top third, I'd say, of, uh, of all the places. Um, are they all in Canada? No, they're not all in Canada. Okay. No, there's some other ones, too, that are, that are up there that are pretty tough. Like um, uh, when we used to play in NASA against uh, the Islanders, that was a tough one. We used to call it the gauntlet because you <laughs> there was only one hotel. Like, Oh, yeah. Remember? It's that's that awful Marriott, that exactly. Long Island Marriott. Oh, my God. Hotel here, and then this, this big, long walk, and then the rink was right here. Yeah. And there was no going around. There's no, there's no way. There's nothing. No. You couldn't do anything. So you had to – We we always – there's so many jokes about this, right, because – you don't always know what, where these autographs are going, right? These are professional autograph seekers. So like their totally. books are laid out perfectly. You don't know if they're keeping them for their collection or selling them. So, you know, after a while, it's just, it, it almost becomes a business transaction, right? Like there's no, Oh, sweet. Like, I'm so happy I got that autograph. It's just like, okay, thanks. See ya next guy. Or they'll sometimes close the page on you if they see Ovi or Baki walking by, right? They just like <laughs> take off. And so it, it was, it was weird. And so we would always joke around about trying to become like, who, who's going to, you won't be the impossible seek today. So like, nobody's going to be able to get an autograph from you and you'd see guys yeah. like, hands in their pocket and just walk straight down, head down <laughs> and, and headphones in or whatever. So Edmonton was in a sense like that, because there isn't really a good back entrance to get out of the hotel right? You, you go off the cliff if you want to go out the back. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Right into the river Valley. <laughs> exactly. So you have to go out the front and sometimes you just want to like get out of there and go to grab a coffee or go for a walk and not have to, not have to do that because like you're touching Sharpies that people are like, you know, they're wiping snot all day and then handling these markers and you know, it's, it's, tough, <laughs> yeah. it's tough enough to go through a season without getting, getting sick all the time. Is this why everybody so, gets the flu? Is this why there's a flu season every year for any, every NHL team? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I, I'm going off. Sorry. I'm taking over this right now, but I, it's, I feel like it's, it, <laughs> I really fired it, you guy, it's, it's, it's your podcast, man. I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> it, need, it needs to be mentioned. Like we had, so we had a couple of rules, um, two of them. One was in for Pittsburgh and, and Philadelphia where we made a rule like we don't sign for anybody in any of these cities and there was two reasons one pittsburgh because we had a couple uh couple seekers that were that were pretty rude and we're like screw that like if if they're gonna act like that then we're not we're just not gonna sign and philly because there was one kid who would he would always you could see him when you're on the bus he'd just be standing there with his hand down his pants and then a player would come out and he'd pull his hand out and give, grab his Sharpie and give it to the person. Wow. And I don't think he was doing it like on purpose. You know, it was just one of those things. He was, he was standing there and, and uh, keeping his hands warm, keeping his hands warm. <laughs> exactly. And so we had, those were the two rules. These are the two places we don't sign everywhere else. You can, you can sign, but it would, yeah. I mean, Edmonton was top third for, you know, hardest place to say no and to just get, get away. Um, but you know, it, there's some people where you can tell it's genuine that they're just so excited to get it. And then there's a good chunk of people that are just like, like, let's just get this autograph. Let's complete this set so I can put it on, you know, wherever I'm putting it or trade it. Totally. To else, you know, so it was, it was, it was okay. I mean, I, I, I didn't mind it. Edmonton is pretty close to, to home for me. So I, uh, I was, was more happy to sign, I guess, you know, cause I, we had a lot of fans and people that maybe had seen me play junior, had a lot of my junior cards and stuff like that. So 
not that bad. And I guess but, you guys only you would only come to Ed, when, when you were with the Capitals. You would only uh, come to Edmonton once a season, so it wasn't like uh, you had to experience it uh, often. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that was it too. There, they'd say that too. It's like we only see you guys once a year, so it's you know it's nice to get all all of our cards signed. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You just kind of you deal with it, and some days you're having bad days where you just don't want to sign, or you're freezing cold. And Edmonton's one of those places where you're freaking chilly all the time, so. You just want to keep your hands in your pockets and walk away, but you don't always, you don't always do it. You always get to as, as, as Matt Hendricks said, best ice in the league. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was at the old building. Yes. It was yeah. darker. You could tell like, you know, it, you, when you're on a pond, it's, it's that dark ice. Right. And, and that's kind of what it was like in at, at Rexall and it's changed a little bit and it's hard to, it's hard to get, get good ice around the league with how much these buildings oh, yeah. are being used. Right. There's so much turnover. So you just have to deal with it. Like, man, I we used to walk into freaking Verizon Center and they'd still be taking down a Georgetown game. You know, like they'd still be it's, taking down the basketball. And, and the Metro runs underneath it, which doesn't yeah. help. It's it's so hard. It's hard for them to, to get good ice. But that's unfortunately one of the things we have to deal with in hockey. Like if you're betting on a game and you you see that you're going, it's it's uh, it's a humid day in Carolina. <laughs> the ice is going to be terrible. No one's going to be able to pass the puck or bet stick the, the under. Puck. Bet the under. Yeah. Yeah. Check the humidity. No, I, I would like to, to ask you about that, though, Carl, because this is, this is you, brought, you brought out something that, that really is on my mind a lot of the time. Well, whether it's choppy ice or, you know, I, some, the odd times throughout the season, I'll get a message from somebody hey, got a friend who works at a bar in New York. This team, you know, three quarters of the team was out half the night, whatever. Um, and over the years, I've, I've, I find when I've played those angles, it kind of all works out in the wash over the long term. I think, you know what I mean? Like it's, um, you know, choppy <laughs> ice. Yeah. It, it, you kind of think like, Oh yeah, it's going to be a low scoring game, but Hey, sometimes it's a chaotic sport and sometimes that things get really out of hand and that just uh, helps, you know, increase that the chances of that happening. So I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit weary of being like, Oh, it's, it's choppy ice. I'm going to bet the under. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. I think it's, it's more just, it's more in pregame skate, honestly, like guys complain about in pregame skate because like you, you have a bad yeah. practice and the coaches are all over you, right? They're like, you're not prepared. You're not focused, this and that. And it's like, I, I could be the most focused I've ever been, but there's nothing you can do on this ice, you know, pucks are bouncing. And so it, I don't think it actually means anything. It's more just, just joking around, but there, there for sure are times where, you know, a, a, a play that would be normally straightforward and simple and it, and it doesn't work out because it's hit something or the ice is slower and guys are, are more tired. And so, you know, there are issues like that. Um, I would say about guys being out the night before, I, I think if I had to look at all the road rinks I ever played in, my, my best average for points per game in a road rink was probably Nashville. And I never once, really? played, yeah, never once played a game there, uh, not hungover. Like, you know, I was, <laughs> we, it's Nashville, right? You go, it's to Nashville. Bar, yeah, you listen to music, you have Guy, the draft experience. is there next year. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a <laughs> time. It's going to be so good. And, and I would always go the next day and I'd be so tired in the morning and I'd have to get everything out in pregame skate, but that's the, that's the playing guilty, right? You, yeah. you skate a little harder, harder passes, harder shots, because you're worried that someone's going to know that I, I had six beers last night or whatever it is. Right. So it's, Six, yeah. totally. Yeah. Well, I don't want to let everybody know. <laughs> but yeah, that's honestly the way it is. We had the we had the joke uh, every day after uh, rookie party uh, for practice. It was it was uh, slap shots and hard passes because then you couldn't tell that you were as hungover as you were because it looked like you were snapping it around. So it's you you can't really look into these things because it's there's it, every player is different. Some guys would be bad after after being out all night, and some guys would be really good. We're going to get to, I, I do want to ask the injury question, but I, I was texting with Andy the other day. He's like, I'm, he said, and he said, you're bullish on the Capitals this year. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this team? Are there smart bets out there for entertainment purposes only? Cause we're not a gambling show. You are. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on the caps and some over unders and some, and any other kind of point props you'd like for these guys? Yeah, well, I, I am, I am bullish on the Capitals. It's not that I think they're uh, necessarily, you know, a, a top team in the league, uh, but they, they're right on the, the cusp of, of, of being one. And, you know, for the last several yeah. seasons, I think pretty much since they won the Stanley cup in 2018, they've been a trendy pick to, to step back, but they haven't. 
And, um, you know, we saw last season in the playoffs, they took the, the Panthers to the limit. I think things, you know, they should have won that series. Let's, let's, let's start with, they should have won that series. And as somebody who had a, a three to one bet on them to do so, I was, <laughs> I was pretty choked when, when things started to go the Panthers way uh, about midway through that series, the Capitals played, played great. Uh, I think they, they showed a lot of people, um, you know, that they, they still are a competitive team. They've been a, a top, offensive team you know for as long as I can remember pretty much and and that shouldn't change this season and uh something that I, I think really gets you know kind of swept under the rug and maybe you know kind of flew under the radar was that just how good they were defensively um they they were a top 10 team by expected goals against according to evolvinghockey.com which you know suggests that they do a pretty good job of limiting quality scoring chances and you know I know John Carlson has his detractors and um, he's a number one not, defenseman. He was a Nor. He yeah, was a but top he, five he, for the Norris last year. Totally, I know, but I'm just saying. I, you know, analytically, mm, yeah, there might be sure. some. There, there might be some people out there that say he's not as as good as advertised. But um, you know, he, he's he's still going really strong here. And and Orlov I, too. I, think I mean, what, that that D's pretty good. Yeah, and and you know what the the team did over the summer. Uh, obviously, there's concerns here with you know obviously the the, the overall health of the team, the age of some of the players like Oshie. Uh, and whatnot, and his durability, um, you know, you guys would probably be able to speak more on that than me, but um, I, I think, like, you look at what they did over the offseason, they, they, they brought in Dylan Strome, Connor Brown, who, who should really fit in nicely uh, into yeah. this offense, and they're just a solid team overall, and Darcy Kemper um, is uh, uh, probably the most underrated starting goaltender in the league right now, I think, uh, after the, the playoff performance, which wasn't great. I mean, he deserves a ton of credit because he was, he, uh, like, obviously he battled back from uh, the, you know, second really concerning eye injury that he's suffered in his career um, and, uh, and still managed to get the job done. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a, you know, a great performance, but he's been one of the best regular season goaltenders for a few years now. And if you look at the, yeah. the, the same percentage of goaltenders who have played at least, I think, 3,000 minutes, you know, looking at the, the goalies who, are, uh, who have a big workload, He's right there in terms of save percentage with the likes of Saros and Vasilevsky and um, who's, who's the other guy I'm saying? Sorokin, Ilya Sorokin. Like those, those, those are the Vesna favorites. Kemper's 25 to one. I think he's a, a great flyer to win the Vesna this year because like I, really? I said, the, the Capitals are a, a, um, a pretty good defensive team and, and he's a pretty good goaltender. So it could be a, a good combination. Obviously, you know, I, I don't like to be too confident in my goaltending analysis, but um, at 25 to one, I, I think it's, it's a, a good flyer. I'm certainly not looking at Shesterkin at plus 250 or, or uh, Sorokin at eight to one on a, on a team, the Islanders, that I don't think is a playoff team. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, Kemper stands out as a, a, a good bet to, to win the Vesna, even though it probably won't happen, let's be honest. Um, but as far as the, the team goes, I, I think being underrated here, the Capitals are minus 160 to make the playoffs. Um, I have their chances of, of making the playoffs. Sorry, let me see here. Um, around 83%, which suggests the line should be yeah, minus, north of minus 500. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you're, it's not a, a super attractive price to lay a dollar 60 to win a dollar and have to wait an entire season to collect your money if they do indeed make the playoffs. But uh, I think, you know, the 94 and a half or 95 and a half point total that the Capitals have been, saddled with is is pretty low i've got them as a 100 point team i have them as the second best team in the metropolitan division uh and uh, i think you know as a long shot bet at, at plus 700 or seven to one um to win the metropolitan division uh you know they're they're a team that that could challenge the hurricanes yeah, i think Cap, caps fans will be happy to hear we'll be happy to hear that that's for sure and i just to go back to the goalie thing like we've We've talked a lot of goalie stuff on here, uh, Wino. For yeah, because, two guys. yeah, because we don't know because we don't know goaltending, right? Exactly. For yeah. two guys that know shit all about goalies, <laughs> and we talk about them a lot. Um, but I mean, it, it it does go to like the, the fact that you know the mental side of the game is so important. If you have a goalie back there that is that is you know, let's face it, a, a better goalie than what we've had uh, in the last couple of years here. It since Braden probably since yeah since Holtz is yeah. is you might not have those 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 little you know, worries in the back of your mind that ah, something's going to go in and here we go again. This is, this is just what we do. We let in, we let in these, uh, these goals and you have someone that's going to come in and, and play that way in front of a team. Like, like you said, Andy is already a pretty good defensive team and uh, you know, kind of ha has that, 
you know, the coaching staff that, that wants them to play that way, or at least have that in their, in their arsenal. I, I think you're right. It could, it could end up being maybe a little bit more of a stingy caps team than, than uh, I guess then that, then they're known for, I think everyone kind of thinks caps and thinks offense, but I think the ability to be stingy uh, is good, which means that they should be in, in more games. And then with, with the way the power play goes um, opportunities to, to kind of sneak, sneak more wins out. So, I mean, it, it, may, it makes complete sense. I would love to see a, a Vesna candidate here. I think it's uh, my type of hockey. I mean, it's, so not I too, that. it's not too often that you have a, a Stanley cup winning goaltender coming into, you know, into a, a, a new situation on a, on a contending team. And he's got something to prove too. I mean, this season is probably pretty important to Darcy Kemper as far as uh you know, reestablishing himself as one of the, the top goaltenders in the league. Big, big contract, too. I, I, I'm on FanDuel, Andy. I've seen plus 850 on the Caps to win the Metropolitan Division. Great bet. Great that, bet. I mean, I think it should be closer to five to one. And, and look, and, and Carl and I talked about this. The Hockey News picked the Caps to miss the playoffs behind Columbus and the Islanders. I just, Andy, I don't, I don't see it. It's, it's crazy. It's, I mean, like, <laughs> it's, I every, it. like let, me, let me preface this. You get me fired up here because <laughs> everybody treats this like it, they treat it like a yes or no question. And I don't expect everybody to, to go out and simulate the season like I do and come up with, you know, 57.4% or whatever. But like, it's not a yes or no question. I, like the Ottawa Senators, they're the team that's been hyped up all summer long here in Canada. And, and you, you hear a lot of, on, on a lot of the, the sports networks, they're talking about the Senators as a team that's going to make the playoffs. Uh, you know, I look at a team like Ottawa and I think, you know, they'll make the playoffs one out of every five times, not they'll make the playoffs. Uh, right. And, you know, so it's you have to look at it like a, a range of outcomes. And even without doing that, you know, look, go down the list. Are, are the Islanders better than than, you know, any of the teams that made the playoffs last year? Are the Blue Jackets no. better than any? Of, no, they're not. They're so not. If they're going to make the playoffs over any of these teams. It's it's illogical because. I mean, you can say they've, you know, they're in a better position to make the playoffs this year. They're, you know, they got a better chance to make the playoffs this year. Maybe the gap between them, if you want to go that route. But, um, you know, to say that they're going to make the playoffs over the Capitals or the Bruins, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you know, egregious, let's just say. <laughs> yeah, I, I that's don't a good it. point that they have a better chance to make the playoffs. I think that's a good way to look at yeah. it, right? Because they, they do have a, a big addition there and, and that leads you to believe that they're going to have a, a better chance. But yeah, like overall, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see how that ranking came out, and uh, and and they thought that that was going to be I, smart. I still, I, <laughs> I, I still don't get it. Uh, so I, I interviewed Andy for a story. I want to say maybe two years ago about kind of when gambling started coming into hockey seriously, and you know the Supreme Court and all that about everyone keeps complaining that there's no injury reporting in hockey. And, and, and this is the question the players get all the time and Gary Bettman and Bill Daly get all the time. And, and honestly, the answer from the league keeps being, no, we don't want to do this. Carl, you know, this as a player, when, when guys are nursing injuries in the playoffs that you don't want to know, you, you don't want other teams to know what you're dealing with. We saw that with dry in Edmonton in the playoffs last year, everyone knew the ankle was wonky. And Andy's opinion on injury reporting as a better fascinated the hell out of me. And, and I want you to share it now because I asked you about this and it wasn't the answer I expected. I don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky that I kind of grew up in the tail end of the, you know, kind of fend for yourself generation. But uh, it's I'm a sports better. It's my job to. And, and you know, adapt to the world that I'm operating in. I, I, I can't go into the hockey world and be like, oh, you, you guys got to change everything for me. Like this is the this is. This is the world you're, you're operating in. You've got to, you know, kind of work within their rules and, and figure things out for yourself. If you think a player, if, if, you know, if you're concerned about a player nursing an injury, there, there are ways, I guess, that you could speculate on, that, on something like that as far as, you know, and then you come to starting goaltenders, um, which is a, a big hot topic. How can I bet on the game if I, I don't know who's starting in goal? Like, yes, I don't know. Like, are you going to, is it that hard? Um, how, you know. How hard would it have been to guess how many games you Saros, you see Saros is going to start next year, or Connor Hellebuck, or you know, so on and so forth. Or it's forth. a back to back, playing. or it's a back to back, and the starters start in the first half. Like you're probably going to get yeah. Charlie. Like if Kemper starting the front half of a back to back, you're probably going to get Charlie Linger in the next night, most likely. Yeah, and I mean, it's not an exact science or anything, but I used to like look. I used to like to like, for example, when Sergei Bobrovsky was, you know, four or five years ago when he was just dominating the league in Columbus, uh, and you know, was arguably the best goaltender at that time. Uh, it was him and Corpus Allo, I believe, uh, yeah. you know, were the, were the tandem. And um, I used to like sit there like a hawk, just kind of, you know, looking for any indication that that Bobrovsky was going to start or Corpus Allo was going to start because it was almost a, you know, a, a total 
opposite, right? I, I would be betting on Columbus if Bobrovsky was in goal and I'd be betting against them if Corpus Allo was in goal. And um, the thing that, you know, I kind of did was I, I would go back and look like, okay, these back-to-back -back situations, how does John Tortorella typically play this? Well, he almost always plays the backup goaltender in the first game, right? Like, so then you would just kind of right. go with that, right? Not every coach plays things the same way every time out, but you can go back and look at, at things in recent history and to, to get, get an idea of how does, how does this coach typically play things, right? Nashville was a tough team to figure out last year. John Hines didn't really, I mean, he just trotted UC Saros out there pretty much every night and he didn't, uh, you know, even when it seemed like this is probably a good time to give him some rest, he still didn't go with David Riddich, right? Or, or um, sorry, the other guy. Uh, <laughs> the other guy it was, it was it, Connor, right Ingram, Connor Ingram at one point. Connor right? Ingram, yeah, 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 right. So, like, it, it was UC Saros all the time and it, it kind of became uh, – almost pointless to try to guess when when he wasn't going to play so i mean you, you've got to treat each team uh in 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 their own way and uh kind of approach things like that but yeah it's 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 you know it's the nhl's world i'm just trying to work in it and i think there's a lot of entitlement out there and a lot of i mean i'm betting pretty large amounts of money on a, on a daily basis and i feel this way so I think that people that are betting like five and ten dollars should also probably you know kind of lighten up a little bit and not be so um so so up in arms about the way that the NHL does things. Yeah, I think, well, too, it's like all the injuries are relative. Like, like my, my uh, a hand injury for me might be different than a hand injury for um, an Alex Ovechkin, you know, like, like who sure. cares? I, I may have, a, I may have a little bump or something like that, but there's no need to, to put it on an injury in injury report. And if all yeah. of a sudden that does come up on the injury report, let's, I'm a bad example because I'm not a fan. I'm not a, a points fantasy points guy or whatever, but like Ovi has a, a bit of a, a contusion on his leg. It's not going to stop him from doing what he's doing. All it's going to do is just mess with you guys, you know, being like, Oh shoot, is Ovi going to be able to skate? Like he normally does. It's not something that I, I don't think needs to be known either. And then going back to the goalie thing too, just, I guess uh, an FYI, a lot of teams will, will, I know we, we would do it sometimes in Montreal and sometimes here in wash is that, uh, we would start our number one guy if we had a back to back, whichever, whichever, whichever game was a division game, start the number one guy or a team that we think we needed to send a message to versus the other one. So that's another, yeah, that's another layer of it too, right? Like you're gonna, the, yeah. the, the, the game you think you have a better chance of winning, put your number one guy in there to make sure you get that win. And then if you win against the team you're probably not supposed to beat and you do, then it's just, it's a bonus, right? So there's a bonus. Just, Another yeah. thing to another way to look at it, I guess, as well. I'm glad you brought that up. The division, the division in conference kind of uh, games that, that that does have some some weight there, too. And trying to figure out who's going to start. If you if you're looking at the Capitals and they've got Arizona on Friday and, you know, Pittsburgh on, on Saturday. I mean, it, they're probably going to going to try to temper against the Penguins like it's 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 a, a good bet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's, lot, there's lots of layers. And now Carl's favorite portion of the show, Carl's stupid questions. Yes. Very, very exciting one. Um, Andy, I got, I got six for you. I gave you a quick breakdown. So I think, I think you should be good to go. Um, start with question number one. Cause I saw you, uh, lifting up a Tim Hortons cup there. Uh, what's your, what's your favorite <laughs> breakfast? What's your go-to breakfast? Oh man. I'm not, well, I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a bacon and egg guy and I'm not a big fan of, of Tim Hortons food in general. I just, uh, I just drink my steep tea and, and, you know, live my life. Uh, you, to the fullest with this this cup of Jimmy's. Are you not a coffee guy? No, not at all. I, I was early in my twenties, thanks to some people that I worked with that were big coffee people. But uh, yeah, it didn't didn't sit too well with me. If you if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, Tim Hortons they changed something with their with their food. Like I don't even know, maybe four or five years ago, and it was never the same. They used to have unreal breakfast sandwiches, and then it, yeah. I don't know. They like started mass producing them, and then they just they lost the love is what it was. I'm not a huge fan of the breakfast sandwiches, but they're like farmer's wrap. Like the, the actual wraps are pretty good. Are they? There you yeah. go. Give that a shot That's, at some point. What, how do you do your I eggs? Tried when, it. when you're doing bacon and eggs, how do you do your eggs? I'm a, I'm a scrambled or over easy guy, although I, I still haven't quite perfected the over easy. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've learned how to, to make it without or without flipping it, which is something that I, I'm still working on. You know, you, you, you let it, you, you put a little bit of water over it or bacon grease or something like that, cover it for <laughs> until it turns white. That's starting, it's starting to get better, but I'm, I'm still usually a scramble first guy because it's, you know, easy or 
harder to mess that up. Would you do you put ketchup on scrambled eggs? No, that is horrible. <laughs> what a what? Like that is and well, I always drink I always drink milk when I was growing up with my breakfast. I don't know, like my my all my parents, my grandparents would always give me a glass of milk with my breakfast. And I think one time somebody put some ketchup on there. I was like, oh, okay, this is good. And I put a little bit on my eggs. It's not bad. And then I drank some milk and it was like the worst combination ever, ketchup and milk. So I, I, that ruined it for me. That's what I think of. Now. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, advocating for, not advocating for ketchup and milk, but ketchup and eggs. <laughs> uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a ketchup and eggs guy either. No. <laughs> I, like the, I like the milk, egg, and bacon combination more than I like the, the ketchup and egg combination. All right. Good to know. Um, okay. If you could change one rule in hockey, what rule would it be? Uh, I would make it oh, that's it's a, tough to choose just one. I'm not like, a, a, I'm not too much of an extremist here when it comes to the rule changes, but um, I think I would make it so that the player can pass the blue line uh, without having the puck. Like, let's say there's, there's, let's say Ovi and Backstrom are on the rush and uh, Ovechkin has the puck and Backstrom passes the blue line first. That would be offside, right? if the player without the puck could pass the blue line, except the only rule would be that the player with the puck can't pass it until he passes the blue line as well. So that would kind of stop the, the cherry picking. You know what I mean? Like there wouldn't be, you couldn't just throw the puck up the ice to the guy in the offensive zone, but it would get of all this, you know, Oh, this guy's skate was a quarter of an inch over the, you know, all that stuff, the, 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 the reviews and whatnot, it would kind of eliminate that. So that's, that's my solution for offside. It's still, you know, there's still a, hybrid offside but you're allowed to pass over the blue line without the puck you just can't receive a pass actually it's actually a really interesting rule <laughs> thinking about how that would play out. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> not bad okay i'll have to think about that more um okay number three uh best best uniform in sports doesn't have to be hockey well i'm gonna i'm gonna stick in hockey um that's tough i i, I don't know it's always changing for me i guess up a Bruins fan, I'll, I'll go with the Spoke B. Oh, there you go. It's a good one. It's, it's, it's a good one. It's a pretty good one, yeah. But it's a Bruin. Oh, tough. Um, okay, other than hockey, what's your favorite Olympic sport? Man. Does it have to be Winter Olympics? <laughs> no, it could be any <laughs> any Olympic. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it is a tough I'm one. Not an so many good ones. <laughs> Don't I'm not Olympics. an Olympics guy. Is that bad? Is that is that They're bad? The, they're the best, best time of the year. That's so fun. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I mean, I'm real. I, I watched. I, I don't even think I tuned in in like in in 2014. I think I watched like I watched 2010 pretty pretty closely. But so it's hockey. I, yeah, no, I, I haven't been tuning into the Olympics. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go with hockey. I'm gonna open hockey back up and just give you <laughs> hockey there. Um, okay, Halloween coming up. I'm a huge Halloween fan. Uh, would you? Do you think? costumes are best if they're scary if they're authentic or if they're funny so authentic meaning think, like perfect you know they've they've nailed the character exactly right yeah i mean of course there's a you know it's it's always great to see people that like put a ton of work into their costumes but i think if you know as long as you care a little bit you know and and you know want to have some fun i think you know most most costumes are pretty good i'm probably going to end up dressed up as a a stormtrooper or something like that because my kid is uh is is going as darth vader this year so um yeah i don't know my wife and i really want to go as jalen jay and silent bob one of these years but uh <laughs> maybe next year nice i like that and what, what's the best costume you've ever had that you can remember <laughs> oh man my, my mom made me uh an undertaker costume in uh in like the <laughs> fourth grade or something it was it was pretty sweet i had the overcoat and the hat and the beard and the that's purple good. boots and gloves and all that so I was, that's I was, good I, I still remember that one pretty fondly all right we're down to a minute 20 seconds so we got to go quick on this one what's your guilty pleasure my guilty pleasure is video games oh, uh yes. I, you know any any time i i have some spare time i think they're the best uh the best form of of like the best medium for storytelling uh, okay. I think it's it's immersive and games are just uh, insane today. If I had if I had the games that are out now when I was a kid, I probably wouldn't have, I don't know, ever gotten a job. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like Goldeneye? Oh man, I can't wait till the re-release comes out. I'm pumped so to play good. it. I I, uh, <laughs> I tried to play it like with the the finicky old N64 controls, but it's tough. Yeah, no kidding. 
Thanks for All playing right. our lightning round here, Andy. Yes. Um, okay, so we got you. I already did your tally. I like a lot of your uh, answers. Undertaker brought you up uh, to a total of 189 <laughs> points, which... Ever what? 189 points, it's, which is pretty good. I, it's uh, above average. We're going it, to give you... It's, okay, it's, okay, it's, cool, cool. it's all made up in the points that matter. Andy, thanks for joining us on All's Caps. Thanks for having me on. Love to uh, come back anytime. Everybody, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week. This is AP Hockey writer Steve Wino with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner, the host of the All's Caps podcast on Empire Media. Yeah, I just want to say thanks uh, to everybody that's that's tuning in to the All's Caps podcast on the Empire Media YouTube channel. We're going to try and get as much going as we can. Well, we, we love doing the video stuff. I hope you also get a chance to listen to, to the John Kime report about the Washington Commanders. We're going to have John on at some point and do some, some cross-promotion, but please stay tuned to everything we have on Empire Media on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.